Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss a solution to a problem many of you have encountered as it comes time to mount your CNC's power supply inside your CNC enclosure, run all the leads to your drivers and sub accessories. Usually you find that the power supply is not really user friendly when it comes to the mounting platform. Most of them you can mount on their side or you know on their base plate. But, you know, usually the, the actual bus bar where your power is actually coming from isn't centrally located optimally for where you need it to be to run all your power. On top of the fact that most of you should realize by now that when using these general power supplies, and again, they're all virtually the same, even though I'm using mine as an example, um, you want to really design your system, your controller, that you can actually service it and you're preventing the, the, the least amount of downtime should there ever be a component that needs to be replaced. That's what I try to do in every one of my videos. I try to reiterate how important it is to keep your system serviceable. Usually what ends up happening when guys build their systems, they focus all their energy on their table because they realize that most of their engineering is required on the table and then when they get to the controller it gets kind of like laid back in the sense that you know oh, I'm just gonna mount everything I want to get this done and you know then they're done you know and everything I've seen systems that actually everything looks neat and everything but they don't make it user friendly and, and think that far ahead that God forbid if something fails and believe me it will fail eventually that if it needs to be replaced how do I prevent downtime now at that point when they're assembling it they may not think oh you know what I'm gonna use my system for business but very soon after they get it, typically it starts as a hobby. I said it before, I'll say it again. And it's only a hobby till they sell something and then it becomes a business. And in that instance, once it gets to that level and they encompass a failure, they start kicking themselves because, man, oh, now I've got to take the power supply, I've got to rewire everything. It's a hassle. Not to mention they usually daisy chain because, again, they don't have enough power distribution from the actual bus bar that comes integrated with the power supply. So what I've done with my power distribution block, which is nothing new, this is a design I've used on my 72 volt prograde power supply. I just integrated it to where now it's backwards compatible with virtually any power supply in CNC. Um, it utilizes 12 gauge silicone wiring, so it's super flexible, 400 degree heat resistance on the casing. Um, it does feature, of course, my trademark toolless thumb screw mounts. You can separate the actual positive and negative terminal if you want to mount them separately. Um, but the real beauty of this is two real features, and I think I cannot over overemphasize how important these features are. The first feature is the expandability. You're no longer limited with only three positive and three negative outputs. Now, your power supply may have a little more, may have a little less, but typically this is the kind of stuff that you're dealing with. Now, under a general integrated system like a G540 digital driver system, you're fine with this because G540 only requires three leads to actually go to the power supply to function. And as long as the enclosure that it's designed for is is set properly and everything is set properly as far as where the power supply is you're good you know and in my design it works fine for that application because typically this is more than enough than you'll ever need as far as where it's centrally located and, and convenience what you find though is with individual drives and individual breakout boards and sub accessories this is where you get into the problem you run out of terminal spots almost almost within two or three drives you're already out of terminal spots if you're not daisy chaining which I hope all of you are not doing because it's not best practice and we've now expanded that so we've already corrected that issue by allowing you up to 12 spots on top of the fact that now you have a choice on either using direct terminals where you can go right through and use the wiring which I don't recommend I'm not a big fan on the direct through terminals. so what I did is I I'm including with the actual power distribution block ring terminals now guys before you say anything I see the hole on these I always give you guys a washer so don't worry about that but I always use ring terminals and the reason I do I don't like the fork terminals because if they're ever loose now again I'm just talking safety here if they ever come loose the fork can slide out with a ring terminal even if the screw is loose it doesn't come out I use ring terminals on all assemblies you see here these are ring terminals so nothing can pull out you'll destroy the wire before anything will pull out even if the screw is loose that's safety that's integrity and again safety should always come forth before anything I mean it's 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 much deeper than that so I want you guys to have the best this without a doubt is the easiest system when it comes to servicing available mainly because instead of you dealing with the typical bus bar that so many of us have done in the past myself included 
using this method allows for you to service your unit instantly. So instead of you, per se, mounting your power supply, running all your drives and sub-accessories to the bar itself, power supply fails, you gotta not only remove the power supply, but now you have to rewire all of your drives and sub-accessories. In this instance, let's say that same thing happens, all you would have to do is demount your power supply, remove the two terminals, pull the power supply out, put the new one in, put the two terminals back on, mount the power supply, and you're done. You would never have to disturb any of your drive wiring or sub-assembly wiring because everything there is set the way it should be, remotely located wherever you'd like in your enclosure. You can come up, you can come over. Um, some guys drill holes in the side of their power supply to make it, you know, totally accessible. I mean, the options are endless. And again, I designed this for CNC automation use, but the applications for this are endless. I mean, and again, they work extremely well. And I cannot emphasize, they work so well, in fact, that that's what made me really want everybody to have it available to them. Because, again, servicing your system, guys, that's, that's the ultimate moneymaker. It really is. If you think about it, when you look at all the vendors that are out there, they like, like I said, they, it, keeping things difficult means you're always going back to them. I'm trying to empower you to not make things difficult. Think ahead. Do it right the first time. And when you have to service your system, it's a joke. It's, hey, you know, I need a power supply. And again, you don't even have to order from me again. If you, I mean, wherever you get your power supply, so be it. As long as you have the terminals and everything connects fine, you're in. Once again, if these ring terminals don't work for you, let me know. I can custom make that again. It will be a custom charge. But overall, it's an endless solution to virtually every power supply available for CNC that you'd be looking at. So... I can tell you, it will eliminate your downtime without a doubt. Then you're, it's up to you where you want to mount your power supply. It doesn't have to be, you know, on the bottom where it usually has to be, or on the side, or, you know. Then I, I have guys all the time. Well, the fan is going to be, you know, kicking hot air on my drives, and that doesn't make sense. And I want to fix that. How do I fix that? Now it all makes sense. Rather than running, you know, numerous leads over, this keeps everything super simple. Once again, we can extend these leads if required and you're good. You're running 12 gauge wiring so you have no power degradation. I mean, this is the way things should be done and hopefully you guys will think ahead whether you use this system or not, it's available. On top of that, always use that technique and I can't emphasize it enough. Um, use the technique that you know you're always designing for servicing. Always design whatever you do, whether it be your table, controller, Design everything for the ease of servicing so that when you do have to run and, you know, replace something, it's that simple. Rewiring anything takes hours, and it'll usually get more tedious, and then you make a mistake, especially when you're under pressure. And guys, believe me, anyone who's manufactured before and, you know, as a company owner where you're actually trying to produce for profit and all of a sudden the part fails, you're in the middle of production, believe me, it could be catastrophic. Okay, and I never try to hold you guys captive that way. If something like that happens, of course, I have overnight shipping. I'll do Saturday shipping. If you're local, I could even have my courier drive it to you. I want you guys to be empowered. No one should be held captive like that. No business. So, again, hopefully this will solve a lot of your guys' problems. I know a lot of my past clients have discussed this before with me. And like I said, I just wanted to, I, I've now had a little more time. I wanted to work it out, work out some flaws that I've seen that I could do as far as... Uh, making it more adaptive to every power supply and i think i have and once again just so you know you will get the ring terminals these are the ring terminals that you will get with the actual power distribution block so you'll be able to use these high quality monsters and again they are solder connectors guys i'm a fan of soldering and most of you already know that um if soldering if it's done right does not fail okay especially with cnc where you know you're not installing a stereo you're not you know working on a car now we're working on a robot Things, in my eyes, soldering is more permanent. It's, it's, you know, it's by far a stronger, more efficient bond if it's done correctly, as long as you're willing to take your time. Some guys are not really fond of soldering. You could use any connector you choose. Again, it is your unit if you purchase it, but I highly recommend going with the circle connectors for safety. And I recommend that on everything. I tell you guys that all the time as far as, you know, what you're looking at. Again, depending on what kind of connector you're using, the circle connectors do keep everything sound um, when it comes to terminal block distribution. So just keep that in mind. 
And once again, if you guys do have any questions, you can message me at storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com. Or you can message me through eDealers Direct Automation. On eBay, it's eDealers Direct. Again, my name is Vince. I'm the lead engineer and company owner. Thank you for your time. Take care.